everybody, I'm Ed Bighead. I'm here with Turnbar and we are the Brood Squad. We're with azsnakebit.com and also facebook.com slash the AZ Brood Squad. Today we're going to be sitting down and interviewing Rockstar12, who's also a member of the AZ Snake Pit. She's also a huge Rockies fan, but also somehow a massive Diamondbacks fan too. So what we're going to do today is find out how the fuck that's possible. Welcome back. This is Ed Bighead, and I'm sitting down with Rockstar12, who is a huge Colorado Rockies fan. She also posts on azsnakebit.com. You may remember her username. And Rockstar12, you're a huge Rockies fan. You're from Colorado. Is that true? Yes, I was raised there. Okay, you've been a fan of the team ever since their induction into Major League Baseball? Yes. Uh, tell me about your first game that you ever saw. First game I ever went to was at Mile High Stadium for a course fill open, and it was just an amazing atmosphere, but it was even better when course filled open because, well, of course, they could hold more seats, more people, and I just happened to be at the game when Dinger came about, so seeing the mascot as well as the Rockies. So speaking of Dinger, why the fuck does he look like a dinosaur? <laughs> and did you notice that Dinger's head looks like a cosmic brownie with all them rock gems on it? Oh yes, I hear about that all the time from different fans. They always ask that same question, matter of fact. Was he hatched in the PBS parking lot? No, he was actually mm -hmm. hatched out on the field at Coors Field. So he's a dinosaur though. I mean, is that mm -hmm. because like because prehistoric age, rocky type actually, of Actually, when they built Coors Field, the construction crew building it found a bunch of dinosaur fossils that were buried underneath and they took him to the Preservation Society at the museum, and when the Rockies became a team, they were looking for something to have as a mascot, and they thought, well, why not go with the dinosaur, since they found the remains at Coors Field. So they found the remains, they shipped them off to some scientists, and the scientists constructed Dinger out of those remains. Pretty much, <laughs> along with, yep, along with the graphic arts crew at Coors Field. Hmm? So, you're a huge Rockies fan, but also a huge Diamondbacks fan. How is this possible, and who has caused this? Well, it's it's a little weird, but because I'm a Rockies fan first and foremost, moving out here, I found that it's hard not to root for the local team, as well as rooting for my own team. And when they built Salt River Fields and combined the two at spring training, it made it even more possible. Excellent. So let me ask you, Dinger or Baxter? <laughs> That's a tough question because they're both two of the best mascots out there. They're both entertaining. They're both friendly with the fans. It's hard to go one against the other. So why do the Rockies hate winning the National League West? I don't see it so much as hating to win it. <laughs> I think they hate the competition they have to face to win the National League West. I mean, the Dodgers and the Giants mostly. Yeah, those are two huge dickbag teams. So, who the fuck does Brooks Pounders think he is <laughs> throwing at the Lord Emperor himself and hitting him in the ribs with a pitch the other day? What was that all about, in your opinion? I don't know if that was, I don't think it was intentional, although some people said from the angle of what they showed on the TV that it looked intentional. But Pounders being a rookie, he's so inconsistent, I think he just lost control of it. I mean, I personally don't think he would do something like that to be a dick move. I think it was just a slight slip of the ball. But I myself, I don't condone hitting a player with the pitch unless it is warranted. If, if there's some bad blood between teams, especially between players and pitchers, yes, I could possibly see it. Nice. And I never really thought that there would ever be any type of bad blood between the Dimebacks and the Rockies. I mean, we're all kind of friends against the evil that is L.A. Yes. Um, but, you know, um, th there was that, and then Ionetta slid into Ahmed pretty hard um, at what was one of the last plays of the game in Game 2, and Ionetta and Ahmed even had words at second base. So I was predicting in Game 3 somebody was going to get plunked. If the Dimebacks plumped somebody in Game 3, who would you think it was going to be? I would think it would either be one out of three players. It would either be Nolan Arenado, Trevor Story, or possibly even Charlie Blackman. 
So speaking of Charlie Blackman, whose beard is better, his or beard or uh, Bradley's? <laughs> that's that's a hard competition because they're both growing it pretty well, full bore. Mm -hmm. But Charlie's been growing his longer, so I think he might have a slight advantage. Charlie looks like he's been working the coal mines in Afghanistan with that beard. Uh, yeah. Bradley's is more manicured and I don't know, curly hair type of fluffy thing. But you're going, yeah. are you going with Blackman's on that? Yep, because he looks like the rugged mountain man. I think he based his beard off Todd Helton's beard from previous years. So on your Facebook page, you like to comment about John, John Ryan Murphy. Is he the sexiest man alive? <laughs> yep. <laughs> he, he puts Blake Shelton to shame by far. <laughs> Pretty Boy Murphy. That's my guy. That's, that's your nickname for him. Mm -hmm. And speaking of sexy men, do you miss Mark Reynolds? Yes and no, actually. I miss him as a Rocky, not so much as a Diamondback, only because he was such a dick when he was with the Diamondbacks, throwing his own players under the bus the way he did and thinking it was all about him. I mean, yeah, he got a taste of reality when he started playing at Coors because he found, you know, the ball does travel so well or not so well in his case. He's either the king of strikeouts or he's the king of home runs. <laughs> Adam Donitis. Right, Adam Donitis, I like that. So what do you, uh, how do you think about the job that Bud Black is doing so far? Until recently, I think he's done really well. I think if he'd get that bullpen in shape, he could get back to the really well level. So speaking of managers of the Rockies, who's your favorite Rocky manager of all time and why? Don Baylor. He nice. was a class act. He was always fan friendly. He was their first manager. He right? was the very first manager and he did go back in another capacity with the team a few years ago, I believe after he was coaching with the Diamondbacks. And then he's recently passed away. Yes. Last year, so. um, tell me your thoughts on uh, Brian Shaw and the $9 million Rockies bullpen. I think that honestly, he has been nothing but a waste. And the reason why we saw faces of this when he was with the Diamondbacks. He, the Diamondbacks, he pitched the same exact way. With Cleveland, he improved a little bit, but as I told other Rockies fans, I said, you're gonna hate him. I said, and I'll tell you why. I said, I saw him pitch with the Diamondbacks and he was inconsistent. He had control issues and he just, he just wasn't the guy that they should be paying all that money to. And what's your opinion on the $8 million man cargo? And is he, is he still a vital piece of the team anymore? I think so. I'm actually glad we brought him back because he was an integral part in the last 10 years or so of that team, especially of the outfield core. I mean, you have Cargo, you have Blackman, and you have Para. Those three right there make up the cog of that outfield. And without Cargo, who do you put out there? Right. Exactly. What do you think about Para's dyed gray slash purple hair? With that personality, <laughs> it all goes well. He is too sassy. He too is sassy, sassy but baseball. he's charismatic. Yep. So, okay. So, earlier in June, the uh, Dodgers swept Colorado in three games in Colorado. How mm -hmm. did you feel about that when that was happening? I was really, really upset about that. And the reason being because we could have taken the Dodgers. We could have taken them and left them in third place where they should have been. But because the playing wasn't up to par, the pitching wasn't up to par, the Dodgers rolled right over the top of us, kind of like with the Diamondbacks just to do us over the weekend. And you hate the Dodgers, specifically Yasiel Puig the most, right? Yes, and the weird parts of that is I have some Dodger fans in my family so it's kind of a sticky wicket at times. And then you still call him family. Yeah. <laughs> My Uncle Paul was a diehard, devout Dodgers fan, uh, bless his soul. But he had a parrot. He had this parrot that absolutely hated him. And every time my uncle would watch the Dodgers and they'd lose, he'd sit there and go, God, these Dodgers suck. And this parrot would mimic him and go, Dodgers suck, Dodgers suck. <laughs> well, that's a great parrot. We should actually yep. invest in that in the Bruce Ball. So as a Rockies fan, do you uh, drink who is like? No. no, that's against my religion. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might be a Colorado-based thing, but uh -huh. that beer is nasty. They should have left it in the whores. Nice. <laughs> so we've got some hot sauce for you to try since you're an interviewee. We have two different types of hot sauce, brut oh. sauce tapine chili okay. and brut sauce Thai chili. Which one is tapine? Can you point that out? That's the tapine? 
Okay, so that's the tapine there. Give it a try. And we're going to get the Thai chili ready for you here. Mm. So what do you think about that? That is really good. You like it? It's delicious? It is. It's got some great well, flavor. If you were a it's consumer, would you pay $9 for that, a bottle? Handmade, brutally handcrafted by the Brutes. I could see myself doing that. Yeah, okay. And the next one I think you just put on your plate is the Thai chili. Give that one a try for us. Not quite as brutish. Hmm. I think I like that one the best. Excellent. We appreciate your feedback on that. Keep your chips if you want. If not, James <laughs> can take them away. <laughs> Thank you. Who's your favorite current dime bag? Well, I've got a few. Zach Crinky being one of them. Mm -hmm. And of course, John Ryan Murphy, AKA Pretty Boy. So who has better hair, Granky or Harper? Granky by far. Yeah, he's so handsome, isn't he? Granky is, there's just something about that guy. Nope. So, so taking your uh, divided biases mm -hmm. into, uh, into account, who is your favorite right now to win the division? That's really tough. I could actually see Arizona doing it the way they've been stepping it up, especially after a like they said on TV, a Jekyll and Hyde start to the season. I could see them doing it. Or it could go either way. I could see Colorado flipping their fortune and going for the gusto. Well, if Colorado made it, we would definitely root against them, or root for them against the Giants <laughs> and the Dodgers. Yes. The Rockies Amen. are friends against the LA Eagle. And the Padres, they just don't count. Yeah, the Padres don't matter. The <laughs> Hosmers, you mean? Yeah, the Hosmers, indeed. A couple more questions here. Favorite current Diamondback? John oh, Granky, I'm sorry, we already asked that. Yep. Um, favorite thing about Coors Field? Favorite thing about Coors Field? There's so much to see there. I mean, I grew up in the mountains of Colorado, so going to a game there and seeing those mountains, seeing it whether it's snowing or it's a beautiful September evening or your typical rainy afternoon, mm -hmm. no matter what, you get a yeah, show there, of beauty. There were some games earlier in the season that had to be postponed or even canceled because mm -hmm. of the weather there. Oh. Nice. Okay, last question. Thoughts on the wave? I can't stand the wave. <laughs> Good. Anybody, Cheers. Anybody who knows me, and, and you can ask, I'm still hungry about this. Anybody who knows me, every time I'm on Twitter, my hashtag says, ban the wave or kill the wave. Nice. I don't like the wave. I will not do the wave, and I will not support the wave. Very nice. And with that answer, Rockstar12, even though she's a huge Rockies fan, is an honorary member of the Brood Squad. So let's show her some support. You're here. You can see this interview on azsnakebit.com and also facebook.com slash the AZ Brood Squad. Look out for our Instagram. Look out for our YouTube. Rockstar12, thank you so much for meeting with us today and thank joining us. Hope to see you on the Snake Pit soon. And we are the Brood Squad. Thank you.